What's your best sorry wrong number moment? Not the best, actually heartbreaking, but definitely most memorable. Years ago, I got a new number, and within the first few days, I got a text from an unknown number saying, I love and miss you. I figured someone's ex was texting, but who knows, they could be the reason the last person gave up my new number, so I just ignored it. Not my drama. The texts continued to come, but not a lot, and usually just, I love you and miss you, so I'd just ignore it and keep going on with my days. One day, a long paragraph came in from this number, explaining a lot. This poor girl broke down and said she was hurting too bad. She had become lost since the death and she just wants it to end. She said she can't keep going on when the love of her life was ripped from her. Yeah, so I had apparently gotten her partner's phone number after he was killed in a freak accident. She was messaging him in her grief. I replied to her and said, I don't mean to butt in on something so personal. I'm just the person with a new phone number, but please don't give up. To say I startled her when the number replied to her would probably be an understatement. She apologized, saying she didn't know the number had been recycled so fast. I told her I didn't mind at all and I was so sorry for her loss and I was there if she needed to talk. She did. She told me about him, about them, and about his accident. She said she messaged his number when she was at her weakest points and wanted a connection. We talked about her and what her goals had been. We talked about how much he would have wanted her to continue on for both of them. How giving up isn't the answer and he wouldn't have wanted that. How therapy can really help and how she can honor his memory while living on. After a bit, she thanked me for taking the time to talk to her. I never got another text from her number, but I've always hoped she continued on and made the best of her life. My heart still hurts for her loss. Having now found the love of my life, I don't even want to imagine the pain she was facing. Story 2. I was working retail at a pet store and got a phone call from an old lady asking to pay her phone bill. She said she had been transferred twice now, and yes, this had happened before. I told her I was working on a pet store in Alaska, to which she was very angry. How dare you lie to me? I have been talking to blank phone company in Florida, and now you want me to believe I'm talking to a pet store in Alaska? I told her, yep, I have no clue how you got transferred to me, but what's your name and number, and what service are you trying to get done? She gave me her name and her phone number and told me that she was just trying to pay an overdue bill on a different phone so she could use her phone again. I checked with her to make sure what company she was calling. I told her I need to check something and I'd be right back. I looked up the company on my computer at work and called. They asked what I wanted and I asked if I could just be transferred to a manager as it would be easier to explain. I explained that I had a customer who had been trying to call and was transferred. The manager knew the accounts and the lady, and I asked if he could give the gal a call on her landline, which I had gotten, and they agreed they would within a few minutes. I hung up, took the lady off of hold, and told her something akin to, hey, so I got the phone company to agree to call your landline, and you should be able to pay that way. If they don't follow through, here's my personal cell line and let me know. She said thanks and hung up. About half hour later, I get a text from a number in Florida that says, Hey, my phone works again. Thank you. And I sent a picture back of me standing in front of the pet store with snow and mountains in the background saying, Glad we here in Alaska could help. The wholesome Alaskan pet store sounds like a good title for something. Story 3. This is actually about a series of wrong number calls I created for my friend when I pranked him. One Halloween when I was in college, I decided to go as a 1980s business guy. I was going to wear a suit, make this big cell phone out of cardboard, and spray painted a White Castle Crave case black to be my suitcase. In the pocket of my jacket in those pictures, you can see another part of my costume, which consisted of these business cards I'd printed out of the library. They were really simple, just said E-D-G-A-R on the front and nothing more. The goal was to hand them out to people at parties and tell them, let's do business later. After I had finished cutting them all out, I had an idea for a funny prank. On half of the business cards, I put down my best friend's phone number. He was going to school in another state, so nobody on campus knew him. I decided to hand the ones with just my name to people I knew, the ones with his phone number to the people I didn't. The next day, I woke up to a text message from him saying, What the hell did you do? At first, I wasn't sure what he was talking about, so I asked him what he meant. He tells me, I have dozens of voicemails from a bunch of drunk people looking for you. I could not believe it. I really wasn't expecting anyone to call, but I guess a bunch of them did. After I explained what happened, he wasn't as mad and found the whole thing pretty funny and was just surprised as me that it actually worked. Story 4. I got a call in college back when we had landlines from some guy asking for Amanda. 
I'm not Amanda. He got kind of sad and explained that some girl named Amanda gave him a fake number, and I sat and talked to him for a few minutes where he sobbed about how lonely he was and how he really felt like he connected with this girl, Amanda, but she didn't feel the same way, obviously. I talked to him for about 15 minutes, then had to leave for work. Felt really bad for the guy. Fast forward a whole year. At that point, I had a new number, again a landline. Guy calls and asks for Tammy. I'm not Tammy. Then he launches into the story about how he really felt like he connected with Tammy, and she must have given him a wrong number. Apparently, the guy was just going through the phone book looking for women to feed this sob story to, so they talked to him for a few minutes. Just recently, I got a call from an unknown number, and I decided to answer it. Might as well, you know? Anyway, I answered, hello? Who it? But was cut off by the exasperated woman on the other line. Sorry, I just need a vent right now. They clearly thought I was someone else, but it's weird they didn't speed dial the number in their contacts. They went on to explain their day, which was certainly below average. I won't go into too much detail out of respect, and because I don't remember too much. It did involve a co-worker hitting on her in a way she wasn't comfortable with, and bakery items meant for someone special getting smashed and soaked in street water. After she was done, she took a breath and I told her that I wasn't who she meant to call, but what happened sounded like it sucked. She did seem surprised. She asked where I live, not like that, and I said Arizona. She said she lived there too, which was a shock. Fast forward six months, and we still talk sometimes. At least his last random call was from a woman this time. Story 5. 100% true story. So, a couple of years before my daughter was born, so about 20 years ago, my phone rings in the middle of the night. I answer it, and there's some drunk dude on the phone asking for Joey, or something, I can't remember the name. I can hear what sounds like a party going on in the background. I think it was a birthday party. You'll know why later. And he's all drunkenly saying, Drunk dude, Joey, hello, Joey? Hey, is Joey there? Me, hello? Who? No, there's no one named Joey here. I think you have the wrong number. Drunk dude, oh man, I'm sorry. I was trying to get a hold of my friend Joey. I'm drunk at this party and I need him to pick me up. Me, well, where are you at? I'll pick you up and get you home. Drunk dude, what? Really, dude? You would do that for me? You don't even know me. Me, yeah, totally. I would feel better knowing that you got home safe rather than to drink and drive. Just tell me where you're at and I'll come get you. Drunk dude, really, dude? Like, really? Oh, man, that is so cool. But nah, man, I'm good. I'll just sleep it off here, man. But thank you, dude. Man, you don't even know me. That is so nice. Me, okay, man. Well, you go get some sleep. Have a good night, man. Drunk dude, you too, man. Thanks. So he hangs up the phone. My wife, who's been watching me and listening the whole time, says, Wife, were you really going to drive over there and pick up some drunk guy and drive him home? Me, yeah, he sounded like a nice guy and had to have felt better knowing he was home safe because of me than him trying to drive himself home. She shakes her head and we go back to sleep. The next day, I have a funny story to tell folks at work and I forget about it. Now, here's why I think it was a birthday party. One year to the day, that same dude calls my house again and we basically have the same conversation again. And that's when he realized that he had called me last year. Drunk dude. Dude, didn't I call you like last year? Me. Yup, that was me. How you doing? Drunk dude. Not bad, man. Not bad. Haha, ha, I'm effed up and having lots of fun. Obviously. Ha <laughs> ha. Me. Well, I'm glad you're doing good. Do you still need a ride? Drunk dude. Dude, that's so awesome, but no, man, I'm cool. I'm just going to sleep it off like last year. (laughs) Me, well, okay, if you change your mind, just call me back. Take good care of yourself, man. And that was that. One of the weirdest and funniest things to happen to me. The buzz dude is lucky to get offered a ride home by this very nice stranger person. Each time I get calls from an unknown number, it's always some, do you want to get rich scam? Hopefully, you don't get any of those calls like I do. Sometimes it's some guy from India pretending to be tech support and I gotta pay with Google Play cards. Now, if you don't want to get scammed, how about hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel because when you do, you know you're gonna get some pretty good stories. So on to the next one. Story 6. Not me, but my cousin. A few years back, my family and I were eating at a restaurant somewhere in Texas as we were visiting our cousins. So while we were all waiting for our food, one of my cousins gave my brother their phone number, considering my brother had gotten a new phone. My brother is then about to call my cousin, and the phone says he's calling her. He didn't put her name in his contacts yet. And my cousin receives a call. She then answers it, and it is 100% not my brother. It sounded like they were a grown male in their 20s. 
My cousin then goes and explains that they must have the wrong number and the call ends there. My cousins then exchange phone numbers correctly and save it. A little later, we have all finished dinner at the restaurant and headed back to my cousin's house. Me and my cousin are playing Minecraft while my brother is playing with my other cousin. We're all about the same age. My cousin is the same age as my brother and my other cousin is a bit older. I was playing with the one that is the same age as my brother as she was the girl and just had more similar interests. Plus, my brother and my other cousin wouldn't let us play with them because we were not old enough. So, while me and my cousin are playing together, she gets a call from her phone from a different number than before and answers it. Apparently, the guy who had called the wrong number before had an overprotective girlfriend and called my cousin's number. So, over the call, this dude's girlfriend is going off about her man cheating on her with my cousin and is talking about what he even sees in her. We were so confused considering the fact that my cousin was in her preteen years and had never met this man or lady. We realized she must have mistaken us to be someone who is on the sidelines and we, we being my cousin, try to explain to her that we had no intention of talking to him and don't even know who he is. Of course, she doesn't believe us and continues to complain to us about why we are ruining her happy relationship. We then just tell her straight up, not exact words, your boyfriend called us earlier on accident and we have no relation to him whatsoever, bye. Me and my cousin just said that was weird and continued to play Minecraft afterwards and just told our cousins the next day when we were on our way to get shaved ice. Now this story might not be entirely accurate considering the fact that this was a few years ago and was and still am a kid. Story 7. I was 11 and had just gotten my first cell phone, one of those classic flip phones that call people and nothing else. My parents got it for me so I could take the subway to my piano lessons by myself. Literally no one but my parents had the number. So one night, maybe a few weeks after I got it, I was lying in bed. It was probably 10 p.m. or something. And the phone starts ringing and I, being a sweet, innocent child who had never had to deal with robocalls, get up and answer it. Hello, says I, like the guileless fool that I was. Hey, says he in a deep, raspy kind of voice. It's name. You gave me your number the other day. Tell me where you live. I'll come over. I'm going to blow your mind, baby. Well, I wasn't expecting that, obviously, but I try to be a courteous person and I'd seen my mom deal with wrong number calls before, so I just imitated her. I'm sorry, sir. I don't think we've met. You must have the wrong number. At which point, of course, it all went to hell. Quit playing with me, witch, yells this adult man at me, an 11-year-old child. You gave me your number, so stop effing around and tell me where you live. I'm really sorry. You have the wrong number. I don't even know who you are, I said. And please imagine my voice going up at least two octaves over the course of that line because I squeak when I panic, even now with an adult voice. Tell me where you live, he roars into the phone. Tell me where you live, tell me where you live, witch. Over and over again, louder and louder, and I was panicking, so I said the only thing that came into my mind, which was, I'm 11. There was silence, pure, beautiful silence. I like to imagine that absolute weasel spent those moments slowly realizing the pile of crap he'd landed himself in. For probably 10 seconds, he said nothing. Then, without a word, he hung up. That was over a decade ago, and I can still remember exactly how he sounded saying, Tell me where you live, which It still makes me shudder. Damn, that's crazy nuts. If I were in that situation, I would have given him the address to the closest establishment to a police station and called the cops on him. Story 8. A random number calls my cell phone. The only reason I even remember this is because it was a sweeping romance for a while and one of my favorite stories. I may add, I wrote it in my journal too. Girl, panicked. Hi, is, is Alice there? Please tell me if she is. It's important, okay? Something in her voice prompted me to be completely truthful yet omit certain facts, i.e. who the hell is Alice? Me, I hate to break it to you, but she isn't here. Is everything okay? Her. OMG, OMG, what am I going to do? Do you know where she is? Me, nah, afraid not. What's going on? Maybe I can help. Her, I don't know. Hmm, panic breathing and the sound of true fear. My inner paladin woke up, started sniffing around with narrow eyes. Me, okay, it's okay. Breathe steady. I'm sure she's fine. What's bothering you? I'd like to help. Her, okay, okay, maybe. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, so Alice has her boyfriend, John, right? Me. Okay. Her. He tried to kiss me and stuff, and she and I had a fight about him before because I didn't trust him. Me. What does uh, stuff mean exactly? Her. He tried to touch me. We ran into each other at the bar, and I was a little tipsy. I knew it too, but he went for it and tried. 
I was all, WTF, man, get off of me, kicked him in the shins and ran away. She's going to think I'm full of crap, be all, right, Jan, all right, this crap again, John this and that, ugh. Me, well then, sounds like John needs a beating. Are you in a safe spot? Her, I think so. I'm at the mayor's over by the highway. Me, the one downtown, home city on 14th. Her, yeah, that's it. Me, I'll be there shortly. Stay inside there. I'll meet you in the electronics. I had literally nothing better to do, so I hung up and headed over. Walked right up to her and said, I know this is weird. We don't know each other, but you called me a bit ago and it sounds like you're in a real trouble situation here. I would have just left it alone, but I am involved now. What do you want to do? I suggest calling the police. Note, for posterity, she is freaking gorgeous, like so pretty that she was in that league of girls that you look at and wistfully think you would never have a chance in hell with. Her, OMG, you tricked me? Wait, no, you, oh, that's sneaky, I like that, but oh. Me, I didn't lie, I just didn't say you called the wrong number. I don't exactly get a lot of calls from girls with great sounding voices in need of a hero, even a knockoff one like me, so, uh, cops, I can't leave till you're good, you know, it's also like 1.30am. Her, nah, no cops, Mr. Sneaky, we're okay. Um, let's go chill in the summer area with the chairs and see what we can do, okay? I just don't want to be alone. After that, we got in touch with her crappy friend who was extra crappy. John was with her. Crappy friend caught him a few months later in the act, though, so she tried to reconnect. But by then, Jana had enough self-confidence in herself that she didn't need a friend like that. But we stayed there chatting till dawn, went to the park and sat and watched people, fell asleep on a bench and started dating for a while. It didn't work out simply because we have such different lives. And we're going different places, but we are still good friends. She's married now, probably got fat with zero regrets, and likes to torment her kids. I'll never forget that wrong number. Story 9. For the sake of this story, let's say my name is Bob. Someone called my cell phone while I was at my girlfriend's place. She's an ex now, and this was a while ago. It was a girl who just said something like, Hey, how are you? And I said, Um, I'm good, thanks. How are you? And she answered and started to say something else, but I had to interrupt her to ask who it was. She was not impressed. She said something like, you're kidding, right? And is this some kind of joke? I assured her I wasn't joking. And then she said, okay, funny, but Bob on the phone now. She knew my name, but she wasn't telling me her name. I had to say it a few times, this is Bob. She said, you really don't know who this is? And then she said, we are going out tomorrow. I was trying so hard to think if I even had plans tomorrow with friends or family or something. Keep in mind, my girlfriend at the time was sitting there watching my side of the conversation, totally confused. The girl on the phone demanded that I put Bob on the phone, and finally I asked, what phone number did you mean to call? She checked the number and realized she had reversed the last two digits and called me by accident. We both kind of laughed and she apologized. She double-checked that I had the same name as the guy she was trying to reach and she told me that I kind of even sounded like him. I told her there was no problem and my girlfriend at the time was totally understanding. A few weeks later, I got a text from the same wrong number saying something like, I'm so happy to have you in my life. I replied with something like, thanks, that's really nice of you to say, but you have the wrong number again. That was the last time I ever heard from her and I never even got her name, but I had her number, so how do you like them apples, I guess? I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you made it this far, I'm sure you're also going to enjoy what's the weirdest text you got accidentally. I'm pretty sure you're going to love and fall for story three. I'll see you in that video.